Cray Nation. This bout is three five minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, in the blue corner, a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins, three losses and one draw. Standing at 169 centimeters tall, weighing in at 70 kilograms, representing A bars and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, Razul Zolotoy Pezegbaev! Across the cage, his opponent stands in the red corner, a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and four losses, standing at 175 centimeters tall, weighing in at 70.7 kilograms, representing Almaty, Kazakhstan, and underdog team, Ilya Dynamite Ashkenov! Over to our referee in charge of the action. Kerrick, I don't want to cast dispersions on anyone who may have the measuring tape, but if Razul Tezikbaev is 169 centimeters tall and Ilya Ashkanov is 170, but again, I would not be surprised to see Razul Tezikbaev duck underneath, use his height disadvantage to his advantage to get in and score the takedown. Very wary glove touch there. Razul with five wins by submission. Ilyar Ashkanov, six wins by submission. So obviously this fight will end by a knockout. Oh, beautiful stiff jab from Ashkanov. Getting his opponent's attention down low and then he'll go back up to the head. A clear reach advantage here for Ilyar Ashkanov. Again, that jab just pops in and out. Using that reach advantage beautifully when it comes to the hands. Only real dent that Razzle seems to be making is when the fight's in kicking range. Hurt him. Dynamite has such a tricky style. He stays a hair outside of his opponent's range. He fades, which you're not supposed to do in this sport, and then he pops in. Oh, beautiful sprawl, but says it by Ev. Takes the bike. Has the hooks in. Both hooks in. Riding solidly, got a seatbelt on. As we said during the walkout, he is a Kyrgyzstan national grappling champion and a master of sport in grappling and MMA. Ashkanov done a good job to relinquish the, hicks, hit, the, the hooks. Needs to turn into Ashkanov now, but Tezak Baev is like a little pit bull with this grappling. He decides to disengage, very interesting. Interesting and maybe not wise. Nice one too by Askanov. I think Tizabayev has maybe earned a little bit of the respect or maybe taken a little bit of the respect from Ashkanov. Ashkanov striking style, very, very clean. Oh, nice counter hook. Ashkanov in on the takedown now. Pressing Tezakbaev against the cage. Big shot to the midsection from Ashkanov. Really laying those shots in. Brave Nation, those are going straight to the liver. It's the single most painful part of the human body to hit. And yes, I know what you're thinking, and it's worse to the liver. Hey, oh. take time. Snatch double. Ashkanov just solidifying the position right now. Wouldn't be surprised if you see him posture back on his heels and start throwing big shots. He's doing a good job of completely compressing Tezuk Baev, not giving him any room to move. Compressed against the cage, but little threats of submission here from Tezuk Baev. He's trying to wrap up an arm, he's trying to open the guard, create little angles for himself, but that position against the cage does not lend itself to mobility. What it does lend itself to, Phil, is standing up. If he'd open those feet, he can, may well be able to wall walk up to standing. I don't know that if he wants to 
sit here in an open, sometimes closed guard under a man named Dynamite, hoping for a mistake that he can take advantage of. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have a lot of interest in the stand-up. There is a foot on the hip. He may try and create a little angle here, trying to establish bicep control. But Ashkanov, so intelligent, so strong, so smart in these positions. And the whole time he's weakening his opponent, he's throwing those shots, he's chipping away at his opponent, chipping away. Nothing we see will knock somebody out, but everything we see will take a little bit away. Tezibayev trying to go cross grip on those two arms to throw up the legs for the likes of an arm bar. And There's Ash a kick away, but no desire to stand here. Yes, Ashkanov, he initiated that walk off. Referee decides he's seen enough, wants them on the feet. That was timing. Um, and that is defense. Nicely done by Ilya Ashkanov. Was able to ride out potentially difficult position and turns defense into attack. Big strikes to finish the round. Little warning, but I do believe those were legal to the back of the head. We'll likely get a look at them again. They did look legal to me. They looked like they were on the ear. I think we were moments away from seconds away from seeing Tezik Baev sit through there and sit out. But the second round, or sorry, the first round comes to an end with Ilya Ashkanov on top. But Razul Tezukbayev more than holding his own in this fight. Inside low kick, looked like it was a little bit of a slip, little stumble there. A couple of hooks went wide. A couple more hooks went wide. Right landed. That was definitive. Big scoop takedown, just takes the legs right from underneath Razul Tezukbayev. And that's pretty much where the fight ended. Oh, what a beautiful flare attempt and what beautiful defense. Both fighters ready to go second round. Ilya Rashkinov a little more heavily muscled. That sometimes wears just a little bit more on the cardiovascular conditioning. Yeah, the, the lactic acid begins to build in those muscles. The heart has to work a little bit faster to get the blood around all those muscles. <laughs> Phil, we've got Kazakh Michael Bisping over to our left. <laughs> Nice spot. Ashkanov trying to get the takedown. Lovely sprawl from Tezuk Bayev. May feel like he's in on a neck here. Ho! Oh. Tezuk Bayev now pressuring Ashkanov against the cage. Nice shot to the midsection from Ashkanov. Razul looking hard for this takedown, not getting particularly close yet. Has not given up. His jaw may be open just a little bit. May have tried just a little too hard there. Heferee separates him. Rasul shaking out his forearm, clearly feeling the effect of that tough first round. This referee clearly more of a fan of the striking in mixed martial arts. Oh, beautiful kick to the body, but catch and a beautiful reply. counter. Catch, kick, and reply right down the middle from Tezuk Baev. Again, has that front headlock position. May try sneak a snap down, but big knees here from Tezuk Baev. Changes levels. Had luck with it before. Denied the second time. Switch kind of does a have, single now. Which kind of does have that underhook on his left side, digging in with it. Ashkanov wants to reach inside the head to defend this, not over the top. Referee probably won't give them very long to work in this position. There it is again. Not giving the fighters very long at all to work in the clinch.
Ashkanov stalking methodically. Decent timing, or oh, beautiful timing. On the single leg, just off that big wild swing from Ashkanov, but right now in the middle of the cage. Has been able to dominate from this top in guard position, but has not been able to land any monster shots. No potentially fight ending shots. Be interesting to see if he tries to pass guard here or at least move into top half guard. You can see Ashkanov needs to roll his arms inside, but right now Tezik Bayev's doing a good job of clamping down on them. Ashkanov really needs to roll the rest inside, just as he's done there on his left side. Nice work. A little under two minutes to go in the second round here. Tezek Bayev taking a little bit longer to get up there, Kerik. Big deep breaths. Did take the fight on relatively short notice. Did not have the advantage of a full camp. Oh, nice counter hook. Might see Ashkanov try and go to the body here to try and loosen him up a little bit, try and take the wind out of the seals. A switch body kick here could pay dividends. But he's having great success with that single leg. That it's was exquisite. very slick, Brave Nation. He put a little bit of shoulder pressure on, feigned it one way, put a little bit of shoulder pressure on that thigh, and boop. That base was gone. Ilya showing a very, very dominant game. Haven't seen anything so far that would end the fight, but he's clearly very, very happy as well he should be to be pulling ahead so handily. I think if we see another stand up here from the referee, Tezek Bayev may take even a little bit longer to get up. But he seems to be letting Ashkanov get his work in here. There's always a debate as whether it's, is it harder to hit down or to hit up? So far, it's hitting down that has proved to be the most effective. Ashkanov just winging those leg kicks into the thighs of Tezek Bayev. And Tezek Bayev looks like the, the cardio is starting to become a little bit of a fighter here, Kirik. There's two schools of thought in our sport, Phil. Originally, everybody had a camp of, some people go 13 weeks, and then it's shortened to 10, eight, maybe six, sometimes four is popular now. But other people are finding that the, the way to approach the sport is just to stay in shape all the time. Stay and ready you so can, you don't have to get stay ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And I think what we're seeing here in, uh, in Rasul is somebody who, who is used to having a camp. Keeps himself obviously in, in very good shape. Maybe not quite close enough to fight shape. Yeah, as we know, there is a huge difference between training and training for a fight. You have to give him credit that he's making the third round against somebody as dangerous and as well credentialed as Ilya Dynamite Ashkanov. Making Razul Tezik Bayev's night even tougher is that Ilya is not taking a lot of chances out here. He's very methodical, very intelligent, moves forward, lands some nasty shots, gets in on the hips, puts his opponent on his back, and then chips away merrily. Referees here, Phil, are very intent on keeping are, water yeah. off the hair on the back. It may well be that when the back gets covered with sweat, there's a takedown, the floor becomes slippery. Very methodical are the referees here regarding that particular element. Again. A single leg to the back take, absolutely beautiful. May find himself in half guard here. Could transition easily into side control. Not quite now, as Tezek Bayeb is able to get that knee shield in. 
But again, this is not where Tezik Baev wants to find himself with four minutes, 30 seconds left in the final round. Potential here for a back step from Ashkanov to transition into side control on the right side. But he seems to be happy just to establish this position and launch shots. I think that's it exactly, Phil. There's a risk reward in everything yeah. in mixed martial arts. Right now he's got minimal risk and quite a bit of reward. He's pulling farther and farther and farther ahead. Big deep breath from Tezik Baev and that's the sign of a fatigued fighter. The fact that they are flat backing both shoulders on the ground, not arching up into their opponent, not trying to break them down. just is relentlessly methodical with what he's doing. Score the takedown, establish top position, land pot shots. Oh, that's a big shot to the midsection. That's the kind of shot that makes you see your dinner. Because it makes you sick, Kirik. That was, that was, that was the, the, the joke. Moving on, Ashkanov still in a very dominant position. He's even landing little elbows to the midsection. He senses that there is a finish here. He had been going almost exclusively to the sides. He has, is now coming straight down the middle, returning to the sides, may well return to that middle shot again. Had some good luck with it. And of course, he's going the stereotypical body, 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 boom, up to the head. Feet on the hips now. We're at the risk of sounding contrite and and somewhat derisory. It, it's unquestionably a, a moral victory for Tezik Bayev to stay in the fight this long. And to still be, if he's still here at the end of, of three five minute rounds against Ilyar Ashkanov, he, he earns a greater degree of respect for me. He already has my respect by virtue of the fact he has taken the fight and flew in on the same day as the weigh-ins and made weight. What we're seeing is Razul Tezik Bayev absolutely is an Exceeding of expectations. Oh, that's a short elbow. Just crashing right into the head. It's just consistent pressure from Ashkanov swarming Tezik Baev with shots. Shot was to the back of the head, but utterly accidental. Ninety seconds to go in this third and final round. Can Ashkanov force the finish? Will Tezuk Bayev be able to last the distance? Tell you what, Ashkanov can do. He can punch all night. One minute, Brave Nation. Ashkanov just relentless with the shots here. Tezat Bayev valiantly trying to land shots off his back, but it's hard to get any kind of purchase on them when gravity's against you. Tezik Bayev has successfully pushed his opponent back multiple times, but does not seem interested in the usual follow-up to that, which is to return to standing. Oh, threatened with a triangle momentarily. But essentially, all but maybe 20 seconds or so of this fight have been Ilyar Ashkanov on top, landing shots. 10 seconds to go, big flurry to finish. Grandstand finish from Ilyar Ashkanov. There it is, and surely Ilyar Ashkanov has punched his way to a unanimous decision victory here in Almaty, Kazakhstan. There are many times, Brave Nation, when Phil and I have no idea what's about to happen, and there's other times when we know exactly what's going to happen. That was a terrific decision victory for Ilyar Ashkanov, and we're getting to watch a replay of some of the highlights.
There you see him again, just with the dominant position on top, giving Tezik Bayer very little space. Shot after shot after shot. Little pot shot elbows framing off. Always able to maintain a very smart posture, a very smart base. See a very game, Russell Tezek Bayev. Still seated on the floor, being attended to by his corner. And realistically, if we see Tezek Bayev again, which I hope we do, I hope we see him at a smaller weight class. That man's a natural bantam weight for me. I think, Phil, that's how he was able to make weight when he stepped off the, the airplane. Yeah. There's no such thing as airplanes on saunas. <laughs> Excuse me, saunas <laughs> on airplanes. Or either, for that matter. All right. Fighters are gathered center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, all three of our judges scored it 30-27. It is a unanimous decision. To the red corner, Ilya Ashkanov! Oh, what a great nation. This next battle is three final rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting now the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.98 kilograms. Representing Usmanov team and fighting out of Uzbekistan. Please welcome Usan Atabaya. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and 4 losses. He stands 177 meters tall and weighs already 69.8 kilograms. Representing Japan, an underdog team, and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Give him up for Ilya Dynamite. Ask Brave Combat Federation, 59. After the first loss of the night for Uzbekistan, can Husan Atabayev reclaim a little bit of national pride or will Ilyar Ashkanov continue the streak for the invaders? Husan Atabayev trying to open up with the stiff jab. Ashkanov walked right into one there. With these men exchanging stiff shots to begin with, Kerrick. People misunderstand the jab in mixed martial arts a little bit because it is a four ounce glove. It can cause a lot more damage. Oh, what beautiful timing by Ashkanov. Sorry to cut you off there, but we had to give props to the beautiful timing on that takedown from Iliar. We've got a sort of a crooked head scissor with one arm included on the leg. Yeah, I think I'm not sure that's in anything yet. It's almost like a modified TP choke right now. But we don't know just how much leverage Atabayev has on it. Husan trying to work the angle, but the head is out. Right into the side control position right now for Ashkanov. And he seems to be going back to the well with this particular submission. Mm, but finds himself. In a horrible position right now of having his back taken, but trying to turn in towards Ashkanov and get the takedown. One hook in for Ashkanov. Looking hard for that second one. He's almost got the leverage to get it in. Creating, trying to pull his opponent up, create that little pocket of space. He has scope now to get that second hook it's in. It. Oh, he's gone palm to palm on here, it. Phil. Oh, here we're deep, looking at a very early danger. choke. Very early. This looks deep palm to palm. Here comes it's the top. It's almost over, Phil. I don't see he, an escape. Oh, he's trying to. Oh, that's, that's the it. top. The sixth submission win in the career of Ashkanov. The fourth rear naked choke. A very, very dangerous fighter. And the Uzbek crowd, much to their credit, a polite applause here. Beautiful win for Ashkanov. First round finish. And again, the, the quietness of the crowd doesn't quite belay just how impressive that particular finish was, but got the position.
hooked it in, and there you see just the mastery of the grappling from Ilya Ashkanov. Quietness of the crowd, Phil, maybe a little bit of, of being simply stunned. Yeah. That, that rear naked choke sunk fully in just seconds. We're just watching a replay here. There's some question as to whether there was one tap or two. It is within the referee's purview to stop that bout after one tap, zero taps. If he thinks that the, there was no way for the fighter to get out, I believe that's what was the case here. I have not watched it carefully, but it doesn't matter to me whether there's one tap or two. That fight was over. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, another explosive finish. This bout ends at 1 minute and 37 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by rear naked choke, Ilya Dynamite Ashkanov! Silver sponsor, Yusuf bin Ahmed Kanu. Cameraman taking his time. As well, by a significant point. Tenev is so ridiculously strong. Feeling like a Tenev early or Kipchak late in this fight. Very wide lead stance from Eskariev to negate the potential takedown threat. It's going to be difficult, I think, for Tenev to close that distance. He's going to have to throw caution to the wind a little bit, work his way inside. Might have to eat a shot or two to get on the inside. Nice shot to the body. Skaryev trying to get in on that takedown. Good defense from Tenev. Fantastic scramble back and forth. Phil, we're seeing a different wrinkle in fighting out of an open stance, that is to say one fighter with the right side forward, one fighter with the left side forward, that's keeping your hand on top of the other fighter's hand. If you can do that, you can come over the top with an elbow or a punch. It's our third time tonight having a southpaw versus orthodox fighter. It might be the first time in the history of Brave Combat Federation that that's happened. Oh, but it's a big shot. That was not far away from connecting with the chin. Kip shot. Stalking. Trying to get the range. Land a big shot. That's incredible power. Seven of his wins going by way of K or TKO. Tedev less technical. More brawler. Oh, that landed clean. 
Tedev just looked at him. That's ridiculous. I want to see that again if we get a replay. Kipchak, very smart. He's going to try and throw a few little shots at that head. That was the second one. Try and maintain the loss of equilibrium for the opponent. I'm still not over that head kick. I don't think I've seen anybody eat a head kick that clean. Nice work, Kipchak. Both these fighters thrive in these kinds of positions. Tenet is a physical beast. I'm actually a little surprised, Phil, that he has not yet reversed this position. I think he's just waiting for his moment, almost like a cobra to strike. You can see he's digging in for that underhook. Just going to try and raise the level of Iskariev. Oh, space there to be filled with knees. Iskariev doing a good job, and there's the reversal. Very handily done. Oh, effortless. Two fires just wearing on each other now. Tedev rips that head violently from side to side as he shots. Olyas may want to think about throwing a hook. <laughs> My opinion, the most undeveloped body part of mixed martial arts is typically the neck. But that is not the case with your slow Ted out. This is something that we haven't seen so far tonight, but when you have a, a southpaw versus an orthodox fighter, when you get some time, you're trying to take kicks there, and it flies a little bit here sometimes. Honest. That was a completely unintentional foul. It's almost Tyson esque from Ruslan, the way he rolls underneath and tries to come over the top. He's put himself in the half guard position. Here it is, we see the half guard position is, instead of one, a lot of fighters fear for that half guard position to make shots. It almost anchors you to your opponent and prevents them from moving. Ideally, you've got your opponents back up against the fence when you do this. And then it absolutely is. It's about a three quarter Good work from Iskariev just landing these pot shots. To keep it I'd like to see him frame off and hit a little elbow from there. Oh, there's a beautiful elbow. Just frames off, brushes it across the middle. And this is a great way to finish the round. Now, I get to see that head kick again. You get to see that head kick again, and I get to ask you, Phil, who do you think won that one? For me, it's like, Scary ever if he was fighting anybody else, would have won this fight by knockout already. But given the fact that he landed two great shots, got the takedown. That's money. Of a, that's a money head kick right there, man. Beautiful. That was a beautiful time kick. Got a little bit of wobble for his trouble. A little bit of wobble for his trouble. And there is a line off the night. It is not, my friend. Well done. And Skaryev gets the takedown. He's so technically proficient. He makes things like that look easy. He landed some good shots. Finished off with a beautiful frame off elbow. Realistically, we're looking at 10. In my opinion, we're looking at 10 9 rounds for Skaryev. Any deviation from that on your part, Gary? None whatsoever, and I had said I liked Ruslan Tedev earlier, Olyas Kipchak, Askariev late, and now Olyas has taken the first round early. Second round of what's been a wonderfully entertaining fight here for the Jeanette's Brave Combat Ready? Ready? 77 Ready? live fight. from the magnificent kingdom of Bahrain. 
everything Tan Am throws is with bot intentions. Kipchak just a little bit more aggressive now. His confidence level is up. Thinks he's got his opponent's number. He needs to be wary, though, of walking onto a big shot from Terev. Has to maintain his composure at all times against somebody as dangerous as Ruslan Terev. Both these fighters so heavily credentialed, not just in MMA, but in combat sports in general. Both national champions in one discipline or another. Terev doing a good job of moving in and out, a little bit unpredictable. Like Tedev's trying to come up with the top. What I'd like to see him do is, is fake, the, fake the takedown level change, try and elicit a response, bring those hands of Iskariev down a little bit and then come over the top with the big shot. Even touch the knee to give Iskariev the, the stimulus to react to. Iskariev is in his zone right now. Exchanging shots with him, not a wise idea. Timing is beautiful on that take. Right now, Iskariev can just go to work. Almost four minutes to work in the top position. Tenev does have three wins by submission. However, his last win by submission was in December of 2018, so it's been a while. Iskariev doing a great job of just solidifying the position. But Tenev trying to get that knee shield in, may try and transition to a sweep. Elias right now looks like his favorite submission is an elbow to the face. Let's go. Guard retention there from Terev. Foot on the head. Let's try and cut an angle for himself here, Kirik. Kipchak's got excellent hips. Look at the way he's anchoring himself to Terev with that grip around the back of the head and pulling Terev into the elbow. It's those little microaggressions, those little nuances that make Iskariev such a dangerous fighter. Although Terev trying to jump in on a Kimura here, I believe. No danger appears to be present yet. May try and use it to sweep if he's not in a position to get the submission from it. Skaryev pulls the arm out. He tries to get a side control. He can straighten out that leg and pass. You can hear the thought of these shots. Brave Nation, we are uncertain what's coming through on the television, but this sounds like a cricket bat on a watermelon. Wop, wop, wop from where we're seeing cage side. Watch out for a potential Kimura here or an Americana from Skaryev. Oh, he's turning it up a little. The referee took a long, hard look at that. Trying to isolate the arm of Iskariev. There's the wrist control, trying to dig in for it. Could have a straight arm bar as well from here. It's good accumulating. 90 seconds left. There's a nice little elbow to the head. Head arm triangle. Check. Head arm triangle set up. In all likelihood, he's going to have to go across to the other side. Yeah, he needs to pass. Oh, getting there. Passes into essentially the three quarter mount position. Another incredibly dominant round. Taking the back now is Iskariev. Got a hook attempt, Brave Nation. Got a hook. We got a hook. We got two hooks, Brave Nation. Does he have enough time to work for the rear naked choke? Four or five seconds to go. More of a face bar, it's not quite underneath the chin, but still incredibly uncomfortable. You can break a jaw from this position. If you retract that jaw, if you pull it enough, it absolutely compromises breathing. As oh, we're seeing here. He's under the chin now, this could be it. It's over, it is. It's starting back in the in his brief combat federation career thus far. Talk me through it, Brave Nation, I am not sure there is any fighter who wants a win more than somebody who's coming off a loss. We had two fighters here coming off a loss. They gave it their all, and in the end, it was Olyas, Kipchak, Eskariev, with a rear naked choke. Hopefully we can see a little bit of 
of that action again. It was the readjustment, it was that little micro readjustment. He was across the face with the face bar, then just shifted ever so slightly and pop! The blade goes underneath the chin and this is the rear leg in the show. And Goliath Escaria picks up the fifth submission win in his career. The face bar may have been so painful it caused a little readjustment. And That's exactly that, what it was, yeah. When that chin moved just ever so slightly, whoop! Radius the only slip under there, and it's either fade to black or tap. Absolutely fantastic performance from the master of sports and combat Sambo from Kazakhstan. Oh, yes, Kipchak S. Curry. Taking a very good look. You can see that forearm straight across the trachea, and that is that. Fighter was a second at most, two seconds away from going to sleep. martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins, 12 losses and one no contest. He stands at 173 centimetres tall, weighing in at 70.4 kilograms, representing the incredible fighting and fitness centre, fighting out of Das Marines Philippines, Rolando the Incredible! Across the cage, his opponent stands in the red corner. A mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and six losses, standing at 180 centimeters tall, weighing in at 70.65 kilograms, representing Ireland MMA Pro Team, fighting out the crazy lord of Kazakhstan, Orias Kipchak Eskariyev! Brave Combat Federation referee Deck Larkin is in charge of the action. Gentlemen, you've been over the rules. This is my instructions all the time. If I tell you stop, you stop and break clean. If you want to touch gloves, let's do this. Your referee in charge is the bandit Deck Larkin, one of the best in the business. Not a little bit. This is going to be a lot of bit. Head kick attempt from Rolando D right off the bat. Oh, that's a huge shot to the body, but Rolando D fires right back. Rolando D's actually been doing a lot of body conditioning. It's one of the characteristics of Kyokushin Karate. You take a lot of shots to the ribs, it toughens them up. Big takedown attempted from Oyas, but completely denied by Rolando. Shut down with alacrity. That's a big Again, shot. Again, completely to the, accidental. Big shot to the bread basket, but oh yes, Askariev, credit to him. He bounces right back up. We get to see a replay of it. Oh, it was as well. But oh yes, Askariev opening up now. Seems to be energized by that kick. <laughs> Doesn't want to throw a fourth one that high that hard. Oh yes, Iskariev coming out of that southpaw position. Both men kind of lead, trying to fight for that lead hand, that pawing, jabbing hand. 
They've been a toe to the eye. Perfectly legal. Could Eskariev. even have sweat flying off. Eskariev is investing in the body, but then Rolando D fires a huge shot to the body. It's a little bit of that. Anything you can do, I can do better. Mentality. Eat one to the body. You're like, great, I'm going to deliver one. Oh, what a beautiful slip and counter. Both these guys are incredibly tough. Rolando D leading the, lance, the dance a little bit here. Another take on attempt. This time successful for Oyas Iskariev. Kipchak learned something that first unsuccessful takedown attempt and was utterly successful this time. So far, been successful in holding his opponent down. Now comes a real question Can he land effective shots from here? Rolando D is doing the right thing. He is on his hip. He's trying to turn in towards his opponent, try and get a little bit of purchase, maybe push down on a knee, shrimp out, and try and regain guard. Big shot right down the middle from Oyas Iskariev. D largely managed to slip it. And this is very, very intelligent work from Iskariev. He's taking the sting out of the fight. He's taking that, that air of intensity and expectancy out of it. He's taking a little bit of the pop out of that momentum that Rolando D had. Just breaking the fight down to his terms, playing it entirely the way he wants to. Yeah, it is a fact of physics that gravity is a thing. Being stuck underneath somebody is not where you want to be. Check, posturing back. Look for a huge looping shot to the head. Has the presence of mind and the calmness to look over to his corner to take their instruction. Nice work from Rolando T. Rolando He's trying to get to that fence. Slowly edging his way towards the, the, the cage wall. He surely wants to walk his way up that fence. Kipchak doing a good job of shutting that particular goal down. And trying to turn him away from the cage now, very intelligent. Just like that, the avenue by which Rolando D was going to try and get up has been shut down. Rolando now holding on. We'll wait for his opponent to try and push back too hard and then we'll spring away and up. Excellent pass by Kipchak. Rolando's kept that hook in. Oh, big hammer fist being landed by Iskariev. May try and take the back here. The Incredibles up and the Incredibles down. Looking for the switch. Denied. Kipchak proving to be a completely dominant fighter on the ground. He is a national champion in Bushido. He is a national champion in combat sambo, pancreation, and a master of sport in combat sambo. Little bit of chit chat going on between our two fighters here. They're two professionals enjoying a day at work. Any question in your mind, Phil, as to whether that would not be a 10 9? In favor of Kipchak? Oh, no, none whatsoever. It was a very dominant round. The early stanzas were close, but as soon as Oyas Iskariev was able to score that takedown, was able to impose his will upon the fight and essentially take Rolando D completely away from where he wanted the fight to take place. That warrants the awarding of a 10-9 round, in my opinion. There you have it, Brave Nation. Round one goes to Olzas Iskariev. Right now, on the screen, we're seeing why a near continuous rain of shots to the body, sometimes popping up to the head. Precious little offense from bottom in the face of that onslaught. Referee Deck Larkin clearing the cage. And Rolando D will not want to spend any more time on his back than he needs to. Eskariev ready to get right into it. Center cage. Eskariev getting Eskariev away there. Oh, 
That's a huge kick to the body from Orlando D. And when you see how heavily muscled his legs are, you can tell just how horrible those leg kicks are going to be. Initially a solid sprawl from Orlando D, but that perseverance from Iskariev and once more Orlando D trying to get his back against the cage to stand up. Well, he cannot afford to sit in this position for another round. The question, of course, is does he have the wherewithal to bring it back to standing or even potentially reverse the position? Yes, yes, yes. Two hands on that. We've had some fights earlier, Brave Nation, where the fighter on top wasn't throwing big shots coming down. That is not the case here. Skaryev doing a very intelligent job by holding onto the wrist underneath him. Unbelievable, the incredible with one arm. He's actually winning this battle <laughs> from the bottom. He's got the hand free. But again, it's so subtle, Iskariev was able to turn Rolando D away from the cage wall, so he can't use that to get himself up. D discovered with one hand that that vertical elbow to the top of the head was pretty effective for him. Using it now with abandon. I'd like to see Rolando D just try and explode out of this position, get the feet on the hips, push away, create distance and stand up. Because right now, yes, he may be landing strikes, but he's not winning the fight. He's not. And Kipchak is content to stay in tight and throw relatively small shots. He's not trying to posture way, way far back so he can land the big ones. Were that the case, D could hold on to the head, hold on to an underhook, an overhook, and then when the opponent tries to pull back too hard, explode up. Huge mouse over the, the left eye of Orlando D. Really attacking the body as Iskariev. Guard momentarily open there of Rolando D. That's what he needs to do more of. He's not going to win a striking battle from the bottom, Kirik. My sense, Phil, is in the great nation of Kazakhstan. Referees tend to step you, stand you up from the ground fairly quickly. As a consequence, the great fighters like Kipchak are very, very aggressive from top. <laughs> Chance of Olyas ringing out around the arena here. And Rolando really needs to open up that guard if he's going to do something offensive. Right now, it's been defense and essentially survival for Rolando D. He has done a good job of minimizing the number of shots that have landed, but some have gotten through and they're having a visible effect. A mouse like that, if it swells any more, can impair vision, and then the shots really start to land. Iskariev posturing up now, trying to land the big shots. Oh, he's out! Wow! What a finish from Nuzan Akishev! Oh, sorry, from Oyas Iskariev. He's got superpower. That is incredible. The amount of power he was able to generate. Wow! And to his credit, Phil, he saw his opponent was out and lifted the feet to get a little more blood to the head to help his opponent wake up. Nothing personal here. This is all business. I cannot wait to see a replay of that. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Another look at it. Kipchak One shot. showed what these, showed these men of power. What power Bob. really is. That was it. To generate that kind of power from that position is practically unheard of. It's the it's it's a double shot, Phil. It's the shot coming down, and then the shot coming down, forcing the back of the head to pop against the the, the, ca the cage floor. Boom! There it is, and he is out. Olyas Eskariev cements his position as a legitimate contender. In the lightweight division, he has only taken on the best and brave so far. Rolando D, Abisalamolo Kubanicbek, Lucas Minero Martins. I cannot wait to see what this young man does next. Incredible. 
Rolando D coming to. He's being helped to his feet. I do believe he will be able to stand under his own power, which is what you always want to see in our sport. That means you're battered and bruised, the question, but healthy. The question has to be asked, Kerrick, and I know it's a tough question to ask because you never want to put a fighter out to pasture. You want them to make the decision for themselves, but potentially has, has Father Time caught up with Rolando D? I want Rolando D to stay in the game for the next 30 or 40 or 50 years, and I mean that literally. I just want it to happen as a coach. He is now proven to be a tremendous coach. Great point. I do believe that is his future. Just gave a thumbs up to his opponent. He's all good. Resting his head. Two fighters exchange respect. It's a little question as to whether Rolando D is going to go to center cage. Well, I think well, he'd rather well, rest. ladies and gentlemen, once again, no need to check the judges' scorecards. Deck Larkin stopped the fight after three minutes and 40 seconds of the second round. The winner by way of knockout, Ojas Kipchak Eskari! Nation. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 74 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 20 wins and five losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 73.8 kilograms. Representing Capital de Luta and fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Give it up for the former Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Lucas Miniero Martins. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and five losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 74 kilograms. Representing Arlen MMA, an underdog, and fighting out of Kazilarda, Kazakhstan. Give it up for Elias Kipchak. Yes, Karayev! Phil, he is going to come out right now with a vengeance. Judge, One of the judge, most aggressive judge, strikers we've ready? seen in the history of Brave Combat Federation. A fantastic proponent of that Brazilian style of Muay Thai. Whips the leg kicks in, vicious with the hands. And yeah, as I, just as I say it, those kicks, first kick absolutely taking the leg out of Yeskariev. Watch Martin's footwork, the way, one of the central ways to fight a southpaw, somebody who has their right side forward, is to keep your lead foot on the outside of their right foot. And that's what we're seeing. Martins is methodically keeping his foot, stepping it to the outside, stepping it to the outside, and then he'll respond with that right kick and then the right hand. Yes, Kaliev cannot afford to stand on reputation, cannot afford to stand on ceremony. He has to take the fight to Lucas Mignero. Lucas really attacking that leg. Lucas just so fast with his striking, but also complements that with a beautiful ground game. A BJJ ground belt, so it's kind of pick your poison with a fighter like him. It is that calf kick is the latest major advancement in mixed martial arts. Where it came from is a matter of some dispute. I do believe that it came from Brazil, and now you're seeing the attacks not just to the outside of the calf, but as well to the inside. You start with that kick low, you start to get the opponent thinking about it, and that makes openings for both the kick and for that straight hand. Oh, that's a huge, big inside leg kick, but of the leg of Yeskaya, who has more than a passing resemblance to Damian Maia.
People who don't spend a lot of time in fight gyms may not be able to appreciate exactly how hard these kicks are. If you haven't been kicked before, I'm telling you, it's just like a baseball bat. It's just like a cricket bat coming in at your leg. That was a little bit more offensive for me, Ascario. Trying to get that head kick up there. Needs a little bit more that he needs. He can't just stand there and be a target. This can't be like a, a pinpoint spar for Lucas Minero. Yaskaria has to turn this into a fight. He's a little bit guilty of standing on reputation. Nearly it's a head kick. Nice clean kick from the Kazakh fighter. Okay, a point I wanted to ask you, is it going to be difficult for Lucas Minero Martins to get motivated for this fight, given that twice he prepared for Marcel Grabinski, expected to fight him here tonight. Again, that fight didn't happen. It adds pressure, Phil, and there's two kinds of fighters in the world. There's fighters who become better under pressure, and there's fighters who don't. The ones who become better, better under pressure become champions, and that's what you're looking at right in front of you. Incrementally, Minero seems to be just picking up the pace little by little, trying to find those gaps, and there's only so many of those leg kicks that Yaskariev can take. Skariev did a nice job, got his foot on the outside of his opponent's foot momentarily, has not, however, been able to keep it there. Nice headman being implemented by Minero. Oh, Minero in with the takedown on. Fantastic takedown on the combat sample veteran. Just effortly passes into the half guard. Yaskariev does have that one hook in, but... Just beautiful work from Mignero. Yeah, looks like he's going to transition into side control at any moment, trying to set up a head on triangle. Nice work from Yaskaria to get out the back. Not just get out the back, but briefly take it. Has now reversed and separates. Oh, that leg kick just took the leg out from underneath Yaskaria. The crazy thing about those calf kicks, Brave Nation, is they attack the nerves. You don't necessarily feel yeah. a lot of pain. You don't feel like you're getting beaten up, but those nerves are getting beaten up, and they, 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 can, they can no longer transmit information. They can no longer tell your, your ankle to bend, and at that point, you've got no leg, you've got no leg, you can't fight. I'm just looking at the inside of the leg of the Escalade. And Yaris actually breaking the skin with those leg kicks. That shows you just how ferocious and powerful. Oh, nice head kick though from Yaskaya. That seems to be his go-to weapon. But he's losing a lot of power out of his step from the inside leg kicks of Lucas Martins. And he's still getting off some nice shots. A lot of people thought this fight was going to end in round one. Round one is ending with Yaskaya moving forward. End of the first round, and, and there was definitely positives to take away there for Yaskaria. He was doing some nice work with the head kicks, but it'll be interesting to see just how chewed up that lead leg is going into the second round. It's one of the problems with that kind of nerve damage, Phil, is it doesn't go away real quickly. Yeah. Might have been better off if he got kicked in the head. As long as he didn't get knocked out, five seconds, ten seconds most later, he's fine. That nerve damage is lingering. I've seen it hurt fighters a week later. Never mind one minute rest period later. Yeah, and as you say, with that one minute rest period going into the second round, it could render his leg a little bit deader. May not be able to get his offense off just as quick. And with someone like Lucas Martins, again, we'll see him just up the ante round by round, minute by minute. Does he zero in on that leg again and try and take it out, or does that now open up the, the upper body, the head, to the kicking game of Lucas Martins? He's a complete fighter. He's going to take what's given him. He's a brilliant, complete fighter. Anything he sees that could be taken, he's going to take. with that wide base, but that wide base is leaving that leg right open. There it is again. Minero's a little more aggressive now. A little more aggressive. He's looking. And on a single leg. May drop the hand down to connect here. May throw a knee. There it was. Right 
but now just forcing Yaskariev to carry the weight of Lucas Mignero. Decent defensive work being done by the combat side of man. But like we said in previous fights, you don't get points for defense. A little pot shot made from Yaskariev. Beautiful takedown, absolutely beautiful so takedown. Clean. You threaten the hips with forward movement, and then you take the base out from under the fighter when the fighter bases to stop that double. Just fantastic fighting. Has that half Nelson, and my transition to the full Nelson just pulled my head down. If he gets a submission, I believe that'll be one of the one of the only two or three in MMA history. Again, you're starting to do a good job to get to the feet, but could fall victim to a rear naked choke here. It would be the second rear naked choke in the, the professional career of Lucas Mignero. I'm oh, sorry, third rear naked choke. Once again, Escario showing very admirable defense. Again, again, again. Showing the Kazakh fighters have extremely high level talent. Oh, beautiful use so of the wizard. Oh, they spiked. Martin's on his head there. That is a little combat sambo for you, Brave Nation. It is indeed, indeed, Kerrick. Oh, referee here to come part of the action there. That head movement yeah, from Lucas Martins. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Great minds think alike, brother. Beautiful oh, head movement. That's like he knew from the Matrix. He, he did it twice, and the third time he knew what to do afterwards. Now, very slick move from Iscaria. Knew that slip could be coming, so threw a wide high kick just to remind him. Coming up to a midway point of the fight. I like to see Mignero go back to those leg kicks. He really was chewing up the leg. That seems to be the go-to shot in the arsenal of Iscaria after that rear head kick. Lots of nice in his own. Did he him with the uppercut? He did. Oh, Third he's big shot. He's on the hands the together. If those hooks go in, there's nothing left. It. it is over. What just happened, ladies and gentlemen? That is the biggest upset in the history of Brave Combat Federation. I said it going in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm brutal and speechless. That was crazy. That was not meant to happen. That was not part of the script. Oh yes, Yaskariev was not meant to come in and win that bout. Cinderella story here at Real Combat Federation. 53. The Kazakh man gets it done in his hometown, in his home country. Can we break that down for me? Absolutely historic moment, and what can I say? The fighter had an opportunity to fight it at the highest level you get. He took it, and what did he do with it? And for a round, turned it around, and he won. I also want to speak directly to my fellow fans of Lucas Monero Martins, who is now embracing his foe. Brave Combat Federation loves Lucas Monero. This is not going to slow down his career with Brave. What an extraordinary moment, not just for Brave Combat Federation, but for mixed martial arts in general. What a huge, huge, huge moment. I said going in, there was a Hollywood movie made about this, and I also said, and it's true, Hollywood movies aren't, don't usually reflect reality. Reality does not have a lot of Cinderella stories, but it sure does now. Carlos Kramer has entered the stage. There's a little bit of bedlam here. Re orders being restored, fighters being brought center stage. We're just seconds away from it being official. All right, Brave Nation. Absolute electricity in this building in one of the biggest upsets in Brave Combat Federation history. This fight comes to an end at two minutes and 49 seconds of the second round. Your winner by tap out from rear naked choke from Kazakhstan, Olias Kipchak.
Yes, Canada!